and <laughs> Ethel Rosenberg were American citizens who spied with others <laughs> for the Soviet Union and were tried, convicted. They were the only spies executed during the Cold War and some question to this day whether their sentencing was fair. I'm Jake Storielli. This is Laughs from the Past. <laughs> That shrill? <laughs> you know what that was? That was just, that's my finest piece of directing to date. That felt good? More shrill. Knocked More out of the shrill. park. Welcome to Laughs from the Past, Season 3, Episode Something, because we've been doing a lot in a row, so I've lost count of what episode this Six is. Six or seven, I think. Six or seven, we think. This was, this is another story uh, from the 1950s and involving the Russians, so we didn't want Jake to do a Russian voice again, so he went with a British newscaster who's inquisitive about what's going on in America. Yeah, that was kind of the, if if there was a Julius and Ethel Rosenberg documentary, that's kind of the voice if it came on, you'd be like, oh, that would be like, all right, get the popcorn and sit down on the couch because we're, we're in it now. <laughs> I thought it was good. Very shrill. Very shrill. <laughs> what's up? How you been? What's up, dog? Um, I'm good, man. Run, running on fumes over here. I kind of, you know this, but I didn't sleep at all last night, so my times are off. And as you know, I'm a morning eater, so I had lunch at like eight thirty in the morning, um, which was a chicken and orzo salad. Which I mean, you look up, and I I was eating that, and I was enjoying it, and it was before nine o'clock, and then you're grossed out by yourself. You're you're like you know the rest of your day is gonna be bizarre. <laughs> like no one's ever no one's ever said like oh my god I had this incredible day. Wake up, it's eight thirty. I eat some chicken and orzo salad. No one's ever said that. So no. my ball bearings are a little off. I just let out that shrill voice that may leak out a little more. Other than that, good to go. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. We got uh. We've been getting some compliments on our on our, on this season on the mysteries. People like the mysteries. Oh yeah, they've just been a lot of fun. And uh, we got another one here. Were the Rosenbergs guilty, Jake? Mm. Do you know if I said Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, would you have known their names yesterday? Again, th this is a total. I would claim like, yeah, I've definitely heard these names again. Remind me and. And you'd be like, oh, they were spies during the Cold War. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I couldn't tell you anything. Yeah. I mean, I'm not familiar with this one at all. I'm so like unfamiliar. There, if there was a Jeopardy question, it would come up and I'd do like a, uh, and then they'd get it on Jeopardy and I'd be like, ah, I knew that. I knew that. Yeah. Just so the other people around me think I knew that, but yeah. I didn't really. That's a classic move. You just go, uh, uh, mm, remind me, I can't figure it out. That's an all-time, well, I was going to say that's an all-time dad move, but that's an all-time I don't know the answer move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, I'm coming in equally blind. Based, well, I know okay. the story. I know some stuff. I did a smidge of research, but we're recording a lot of these in advance because we're going down to Florida. Right. And I, I'm just trusting that this book, this chapter in this book, covers enough to let us make up our minds. Uh, okay. And I haven't read this. Usually I proofread, I highlight some things. Oh. <clears throat> so we're both going in blind here uh, on this source material. Wow. I'm kind of the expert then. Yeah. Yeah. You're the expert. Because, I mean, at least I had the mm, noise going on during the Jeopardy question. You didn't even have that. No, I was just totally blind. I was sleeping. Wow. Yeah. All right. So we're in 1950s America. The Red Scare, the communists, is about to happen. This is Communist. America. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. I'm going to start reading. Are you ready? I guess so. Do we need to do any Cold War stuff? Like, Scary. what should I know about the Cold War that I don't? Tough question. We were technically allies with Russia at this point because we were on the same side at the end of World War II and all that stuff. 
And it was like we were allies, but not. And then we switched to Cold War until like the 80s. Right. Bay of Pigs. Yeah, all that good stuff. That's my pretend Jeopardy knowledge coming up. I know one thing around the topic, and I'll say something like that and nod my head, hoping everybody gets through it and doesn't ask me more questions. Perfect. This uh, this this paragraph opens with uh, a pretty bad sentence. Okay. Like Sacco and Vanzetti a generation before. Like, you've lost me, sentence one. Yep. Like Sacco and Vanzetti a generation before... Julius and Ethel Rosenberg became a symbol to those on the left of how the American government was ruled by those on the right. To the left, the conviction and execution of the Rosenbergs for stealing the secret of the atomic bomb revealed a society caught in the thrall of hysterical McCarthyism. So, when the Rosenberg son sued the government under the Freedom of Information Act and in 1980 obtained the FBI files on the case, those on the left assumed the couple would be finally and fully vindicated. What the files revealed, however, was not nearly so clear-cut. Yeah, because what the Rosenberg kid received was a packet saying, we believe there's a chance they passed on the information... Here's $5 million. Never talk about this again. <laughs> Just nice bribe. Good for him. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I, I'm this, that like that through that opening paragraph threw us into the deep end. I think they might now peel it back. Otherwise, like I can just say if they don't, one dude got caught for being a spy in like Britain. And basically he was like, well, this guy's a bigger spy. And right. then they found that guy in America and was like, no, this guy's a bigger spy. And then they found this one guy and he finally said, my brother-in-law, Julius, is the biggest spy. He's the ringleader. And his wife, yeah. Ethel, helps him organize it. And they're the ones that set me up. And that was the final path because Julius and Ethel, they never gave up more names. They just said, no, we're not. And they went to trial. Yeah. All right. So here we go. When the Soviet Union successfully tested its atom bomb in August in 1949, the United States immediately set out to find those responsible for stealing the classified information. The search led to the British atomic scientist Klaus Fuchs, who was arrested and to confess that he had given information to the Soviets while working on the bomb at Los Alamos in 1945. It's F-U-C-H-S. How would you pronounce that, Fuchs? Easy, buddy. Uh, Yeah. Fuchs. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, Fuchs led the FBI to his American courier, Harry Gold. It's a better name. I can pronounce great that name. much better. Harry Gold. That's a great name. Harry Gold was arrested and confessed. Gold, in turn, led agents to David Greenglass, an Army corporal who had worked in the laboratory at Los Los Alamos. So it is telling you exactly what I said. Right. It was Greenglass who fingered Julius Rosenberg, his own brother-in-law. According to Greenglass, Rosenberg had dropped out of the Communist Party in 1943 in order to take on a role as a Soviet spy. Mm. How does that happen? Hey, opportunity presents itself. It's got to be the trickiest thing to find a, someone to be like, I know that you're a politician right now, and you're at the forefront of everything, and you're in the public. But what do you think about being a spy? Yeah, or I, I mean, maybe maybe that's like one of those high up government things that we think is silly, but isn't silly. Like, hey, you know, maybe that's like that's a Tuesday morning meeting. The eight to ten shift is like who would make a good spy? How about this Rosenberg guy? Green glass. Do you think you'd make a good spy? Um, I think to a degree, I think I'm pretty inconspicuous. I think it, I I'd kind of jump to that op Ocean's Eleven scene where Matt Damon goes in and they're like, all right, now you want to be funny, but don't be too funny. You want them to like you and then forget you the second you leave. I think I could do that pretty well. I think you're pretty memorable. I'd have to tone down my jokes a little bit. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to like reduce my jokes in half and I'd have to take away the good ones and do like the corny clunkers. Yeah. Be mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, green glass. 
Where'd you get that? A greenhouse? You'd be like, what? Yeah. I thought it was green grass. <laughs> and they'd be like, yeah, that's a dumb joke. Now get out of here, dude. Yeah. Remember that guy? Nope. Don't remember him. Perfect. No, try not to. Uh, do, do, do. Green Glass was sent to Los Alamos, and Rosenberg arranged for him to pass on atomic information to Harry Gold. In fact, according to Green Glass, Rosenberg headed up a spy ring whose activities extended well beyond the theft of the atomic information. So this opens up and says when the Americans saw the Soviets' atomic bomb in 1949, they were like, hold up, that's our bomb. How'd that happen? How'd that, like, how do you hear about a bomb or see pictures of a bomb be like that's our bomb they stole our bomb like isn't there a creative conscious here that's at the same you know what i mean there's like a coincidental creative conscious that everyone's working on the same thing like how I mean, that's that's kind of my languages thing like we're all working towards something we're all trying to make the best bomb if our scientists can figure it out can't their scientists figure it out yeah also yo i think spies were big back then Oh yeah, I, think it's I mean, it's tougher to be a spy now, but like everyone had spies. Like they should have just been fr- they should have had like an international group of spies just be friendly. I think that might Like I know that's not how it works, but it would just be so much easier. Yeah. Spies were huge in the 80s. Like we get all these stories about it. The Americans did a show all about them. It was pretty cool. Like yeah, I I guess that's the thing for me. Like I I think Americans are kind of obnoxious with spies. Like well, maybe not with James Bond, but like we like to pretend like, oh, all our spy stories are incredible. Like, oh, listen to this spy story from World War Two. Right now, they're doing they're doing a Russian podcast, uh, laughs from my ass in Russian, that they're talking about the guys that actually stole the atom bomb. And there's some Russian article about some spy that that stole it, not the, uh, not the the Rosenbergs. Yeah. All right. At the 1951 trial of the Rosenbergs, the star witnesses were Gold and Greenglass. The known spies. I don't really get how all that works. (laughs) Trust in these guys? (laughs) You know, this this guy's a Russian spy and he's applying for a job at our government. I don't know. He's got good credentials, though. Yeah. Yeah, Rosenberg's sitting there like, I'm not a spy, but they're spies. They've and that's admitted when it. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg decided that they were double agents. I just love that scene in the office. <laughs> uh, so the star witnesses were gold and green glass. Gold testified that during the first weekend of June 1945, he traveled to New Mexico where he met with green glass and gave him $500 in exchange for information on the atomic bomb. Green glass testified that he was following instructions from his brother-in-law. The defense counsel, Emmanuel Block, focused his efforts on discrediting Greenglass. Easy job. He's a spy. Spy. He's a, he's a known spy. Discredited. Known spy. That it seems like that should have discredited him, but I guess it didn't. Uh, Emmanuel Block charged Greenglass with accusing the Rosenbergs to win leniency for his own crimes and to settle some old family grudges. I don't know about the family grudges, but that also seems like a lock. Like, well, he's just passing on names to make his punishment more lenient. I don't even think that's needed to be pointed out. That's the name of the game. Like, why else would you rat? Uh, Do you get what I'm saying? This entire case is like, don't trust him. He's a known spy, and he's only doing this to lighten his sentence. Common sense would have you say, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Was there an allure of guys that were known spies to get them to like double cross? That's kind of what I was joking at. It's like when you find when you like arrest the drug dealer on the corner, you don't care about putting that dude in jail. You want him to rat out where he bought from and then you want them to rat out where they bought from and you want to go to the top. So like but that's the game. It's kind of like that if you were using that drug dealer's drugs and you kind of like you wanted you wanted their drugs. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the DEA, they, they want to get to the top. These the, the government wants to get to the top of the spy ring. But it, obviously, obviously, he's just trying to name more people for leniency. It's whether like, obviously, that's what he's doing. It's whether it's true or not that we're 
trying to figure out. Yeah, I don't know. Block did not cross-examine Gold at all, since, as he explained in the summation to the jury, Gold had not claimed any direct contact with the Rosenbergs. That's interesting. So Gold mm. got information from Greenglass, and Greenglass said he gave that information to Gold because the Rosenbergs told him to. So Gold and the Rosenbergs claimed to never have contact, but if that is what happened, they would have had to have contact. Seems like there's contact. <clears throat> Seems like this dude did a really bad job being their lawyer. He just shouted out <laughs> common sense and then didn't cross-examine one of the people accusing your client of being a spy. You're not going to go ask him questions? Yeah, lawyer's a spy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's a theory. Okay, theory one. Lawyers in like on that. It. Later defenders of the Rosenbergs, primarily Walter and Miriam Schneer. What a Jewish name. Miriam Schneer. Sure. In their 1968 history of the case, were convinced that Block's failure to question Gold's story was a serious error. The Schneers argued that, apart from the confessions of Gold and Greenglass, the government's sole proof that Harry Gold even met David Greenglass when the latter supposedly passed on information to the former was a registration card from the Albuquerque Hilton with Gold's name on it. Mm. So the only proof was a registration card? You ever been to that Albuquerque Hilton? No, not a fan of Albuquerque. Ooh, tough. <laughs> the card had been just because the scenery from Breaking Bad is putrid. Like, uh, it doesn't look like a place I want to go. Okay. I'm not really into the Southwest. I like Wild West stories, but that whole uh, aesthetic of like the land and the houses and the building design doesn't do anything for me. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. I'm there's a, a there's there's a little town out here in Colorado called Grand Junction that's like half mountains, half Southwest climate. It's 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 pretty. I've been to Grand Junction. Didn't we drive Did you through get it? it? You, you probably drove through it. Yeah, but I think yeah. we drove through it. Um, I didn't get out. No. No. Uh, yeah, I like I'm a, I'm a colonial north northeast guy. Okay, that's I like fair. The colonial houses. So anyway, they're saying like that's not enough proof. Like just because there's a card at a hotel with his name on it doesn't mean that he met them and got information from them. Like that doesn't. That's not the smoking gun that they acted like it was at the trial. That's what these historians were saying. The card had been placed in evidence during the trial. Yet when the Schneers examined it later. They were shocked to find that the dates on the front and back of the card did not match. So it looks like it was no. doctored, maybe. Furthermore, when the Schneers showed the card to a handwriting expert, ooh, we got the handwriting experts again, she expressed some very real doubts about whether the initials on the card were actually written by the clerk on duty at the Hilton. I See, I don't trust handwriting. Like, if I'm working a hotel and I'm writing names on the back of a card, I'm doing so many different handwritings and so I'm doing some in all caps, some in all lowercase. I'm going to attempt at least a couple in cursive. You're going full wild. I like that. That's how I kind of write. Like you can look at my notebook and one night I'll do all one day in school. I would do all caps. I just say like that's how I'd entertain myself. Let's write in all caps today. Well, I, yeah. How come you never hear that? You see people do that on the ransom note. They take all the time in the world to cut out individual letters. You can't just mix it up. Yeah. Little cursive, little block, a little something else. I guess then if they caught you, they just they make you write all of those styles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like the best thing is to write ransom notes with your left hand. That's the best strategy. Uh, not for me. It'd be illegible. They wouldn't know what's going on. Yeah, your right hand is barely legible. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I'm I'm in a tough spot either way. That's why I stay away from crime. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's why I stay away from writing. That was a classic misdirection joke, gotcha. Jake. Good job. <laughs> gotcha. The Schneers could come up with only one explanation for the discrepancies in the date and the handwriting. The card had been forged by the FBI to substantiate the gold green glass meeting that never actually took place. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, bum, bum. So this is this would be again we're we're net we're Netflix pod we're Netflix docking this pod. Yeah. So like 
That was a little feeder. That was the background. We're talking about, you know, some of the kids, what's going on. Spies are spies. We're hiring spies because we trust them now. We got the lawyer, Albuquerque. You think, was that the first, like, we we made the bump, bump, bump noise, but that's like the first, okay, something's up. There was probably another, a, a lot of others, but yeah, th- the fact that this wasn't caught during the original case, this, this, was, caught, this was found in 1968. They'd been dead already. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, this is the historians came and and trying to figure it out. The schneers. The schneers. But, but yeah, but uh, that, that, all of that, I I don't, if I was on the jury, I wouldn't accept any of that into like my reasoning. It all sounds like nothing. Like, I don't think it, it proves anything. Yeah. And again, this, uh, I mean, it, it totally feels like a time period where you didn't really have to prove anything. Like, I think that's, Something in the back of everyone's head coming into this should be like, it, yeah, this could have been just a government throwaway. Like, if if you believe in that kind of stuff, like, okay, we found these two people with spyish backgrounds. Let's let's give them the axe and move on, and everyone will be happy. Yeah, I think it's just as likely it was doctored as it is that the 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 dumb hotel clerk messed up the date. Yeah. Right. What's the date here, actually? That's a huge thing. What if it's like the last of the month to the first of the month and, and they, they got confused on the month? What if it's New Year's? If it's anywhere from February 10th less and they got the year wrong, that's totally excusable. I'm so late to the year. And every what if time. it's one of, those, one of those old stamp things you saw at the library that you got to turn it and stamp it? Like People mess those up all the time. Oh, yeah, you can't trust the turn stamp date wheel. No. You so, can't yeah. trust that device, and whoever's running the Albuquerque in, I mean, you suspect. You suspect, yeah. That's a feature method. Their grandchildren are methods. Ooh, tough. All I know about Albuquerque, which is from a show about meth. Yeah. Uh, the historians who believed in the Rosenberg's guilt were not convinced Handwriting analysis was a notoriously imprecise science. This is just every case in the history of time is like one side's like, well, the handwriting matches up. And the other side's, well, that doesn't mean bullshit. And then the jury just decides what they want to decide. Like for the Lindbergh baby, I don't care what you say. That handwriting matched up. Right. Like that was a, I didn't, I got to see this handwriting to see what I think, but. But that was different. We're talking about ransom notes and personal home letters. This yeah. is this is the date. It's like a couple lines. Like I'm saying, if you're working at this hotel and you're a future meth head, you're going to be just messing around with the way you write. True. Or you're going to be in such a rush sometimes. What if they're late to their hotel room? Right. What if it's just chicken scratch? Doctor's what, handwriting. What if you show up early and you write them all out beforehand because you know who's coming and you take forever and you make it nice and pretty? Yeah, never do that. No, not you, but if it was a female clerk, they might do that. Yikes. Also, they argued a simple hotel error could account for the different dates on the back and the front of the card as easily as a botched forgery. I'm with them. Like, none of this proves either side. We're at, we're at zero. We're at standstill. We're where we <laughs> began. <laughs> we've just talked. We've done a whole week of the, of the trial on this, and as a jury no. member... I haven't, I've just, it's gone straight through me like the ghosts and Casper when they eat food, just in the mouth, out the bottom, because I'm not, I don't have a body, I'm a ghost. After all, if the FBI was going to forge a registration card, it would probably have managed to forge one without the error. Again, that does nothing for me, because no, to make it realistic, you make an error. Nothing. You're a, you'd be tough as a, on jury, huh? Yeah, I'm so cynical of everything. You'd be tough. Don't buy that. Like they turn to the jury, all the juries meet up. I'm like, wow, that was a lot of evidence. We just heard, nah, none of that matters, guys. Handwriting, boring. Boring. Yeah, I actually would be pretty tough on a jury. Yeah. Like I think I'd be innocent, innocent, innocent. Like you would need to have real evidence. Right. Which is kind of what they're trying to do. Yeah, but no, but that, that what we know from all these cases is like America's been a witch hunt from the get-go. It's just public opinion and hearsay and like the drama of it all, which I think is what this kind of will result in. We'll find out. Yeah. 
So it seemed the evidence submitted at the trial could not change anyone's mind. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Those who believed in the Rosenberg's guilt continued to maintain that David Greenglass was telling the truth. It was inconceivable to them that Greenglass would send his own sister and brother-in-law, brother-in-law to the gas chamber, not to mention ending up with a 15-year prison term himself, unless he and the Rosenbergs were spies. For those who believed in the couple's innocence, the Rosenbergs were scapegoats for America's anger over the loss of its nuclear monopoly. Greenglass had accused them out of fear or vindic- vindictiveness or na- naivety. Oh, come on, that's a lot of words in a row i got to read there. Greenglass had accused them out of fear or vindictiveness or naivety, and the government was persecuting them because they'd been members of the Communist Party. There is a tidbit here, like, we were allies. Like, passing information between allies isn't really a crime of the the execution within three months. Right. This seems like, this is faux allies. This is kind of like two of the most popular pretty girls in high school. Like, they don't dislike each other, but they just kind of get along. They have a neutral thing. Like, we've never fought over a boy. Like, you've got your crew. I've got my crew. Like, we we can keep this straight. But it felt like senior year was coming up, and the U.S. and the Soviets wanted to be prom queen. And, like, yeah, they were still allies, but they were waiting for something to crack. And well, that's I mean, what's going on here. I, yeah, it's a weird thing because they're allies, but one's like, hey, we're developing this weapon that can kill everyone. It's like the most powerful weapon that's ever going to be. And your friend's like, whoa, that's awesome. Let me see. And you're like, well, no, I don't, we're, think, we're, I, I don't think I want you to see it. Like, well, we're friends, dude. Like, come on, we're friends. And it's like, yeah, no, but. No, we're, we're the only ones that want to have this weapon that can end the world. Yeah. Even though cool, we're friends, America. even though we're friends, I can't see it. No, man. I mean, but we're we're allies. We're cool. You wouldn't even like it. It's not your kind of thing. And then your buddy's like, okay, well, I thought we were friends. I guess I'll just get my spy ring to find this out. Yeah. And now, now they have it, and and America's like, I thought we were fucking friends. You just stole our bombs. Like you wouldn't give it to me. Why do you guys want the bomb that gives us all the power over the world? I think we just summed up the Cold War to a T. Like, that's what it was. Yeah. Because once they have the bomb, now you're just looking at each other like, you got it? We got it? We're not going to use it. You're going to use yours? You promise you won't use yours? We're not going to use ours. Don't use yours. Man. Yeah. Man. Do you have a lean right now? You just laid out the two things. Either mm. Green Glass was, was telling the truth. He ratted out his sister and his brother-in-law to save himself, and he sent his brother and sister to death because it had to be true. Or he was just giving another name, and America ran with it hard because they just wanted to get the Communist Party, and it was a witch hunt. I think you're going to call me old-fashioned here, but I'm going to assume they're spies just because they were spies? Like that, it feels like when you make that career choice, it's a tough game to leave. So you believe that Julius was in charge of the spy ring? I think he was a part of it. I don't. I don't know what to to what degree. Okay. All right. Oh, I I don't know if this quote's going to come up later in this book that I'm reading from, but uh, Greenglass was asked, like, how can you turn in your own sister and sentence her to death? And he was like, Well, I'm saving my wife. I love her more. Wow. She doesn't. She can't go without a husband. Interesting. Yeah. And so matters stood until Robert and Michael Mirapool, the Rosenberg's two sons, they'd taken their adoptive parents' name after their parents' execution. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. They sued the government for the release of the FBI files on the case. When they won that case, some 250,000 pages of FBI and other government documents pertaining to their parents' case were suddenly open to the public. I love when the government does that. Like, right. oh, the JFK papers are finally released to the public. Here you go. It's 5 million pages of eight-point font right. that drones on. Enjoy sifting through this and finding everything. And you're just like, fuck, I don't care anymore. Did anything come from the JFK stuff? No, right? I feel like we would have heard it. 
We didn't. I think that's what they did, though. I think there was still censored stuff, and they were like, oh, I was censored. and Yeah, and like, who's to... Yeah, like, I'm... I'm not going to say it's a government intern job. It's like a high-ranking government intern job, but they probably have someone just, like, touch it up. Yeah. Just like, yeah, we have this. Just change these three sections where it says we killed Kennedy. Yeah. Not to get get political, but I'm in favor of, like, the government should have secrets and should be smarter than the public. Right. And there's things that the public shouldn't know, and, and the government should be like, we got this. The, you have to be able to trust your government to get it, which sometimes that's the big issue. Yeah, I mean, I believe in some of it. Like, I I don't know. Like, I, do I think there's, like, hidden missile bases and shit like that across the country? Like, absolutely. There should be. Yeah, and, like, yeah, exactly. Like, I believe in that stuff. Like, I, I don't know. The alien stuff is tough to believe that we'd have that fully hidden, like... Because then if we have alien stuff, it means aliens have made contact with us. And then what? We'd have, to, we'd have to have a secret department that was like alien relations. We'd literally have to have a men in black. Yeah. And yeah. I just don't feel like that exists. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. And like if, if we knew about it, then you have to spend a ton of money protecting it even more because people are going to want to go there nonstop. And it's on terrorist lists and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Government should have secrets. Supporters of the Rosenberg celebrated. Among those who assumed the new documents would vindicate the Rosenbergs were historians Richard Radosh and Joyce Milton, both of whom believed the couple had been framed. Their study of the new evidence, released in a 1983 book, convinced them otherwise. Wow, they had a change of heart. That's like you very rarely see that. Mm. For people going into a case with an agenda. Yeah. And they're like, ah, shit, actually. I think what we'll find here is that there was stuff the FBI knew that they could not release to the public at the time in 1950, whatever. So it wasn't available to the trial. And the trial had to win on circumstantial and dumb evidence. And somehow the trial did win. Because I don't think you can persuade the jury like, hey, we got this other stuff we can't tell you right now, but just fucking they're guilty. Or maybe you can't. Maybe maybe you can have a guy like uh, Willy Wonka, like meet in a dark alley and just pay him off. Like, listen, we can't tell you. The FBI has some stuff that just fucking kill these guys. That's heavy, man. Yeah, yeah. Willy think, Wonka got involved. What was that character's name? I don't know. I'm not a huge Willy Wonka guy. Oh, really? It's it's. Do you remember the original one with Gene Wilder? Like half. The bad guy meets all the kids before they go in and, and pays them for the recipe. Like, hey, find out the recipe. And, and then Charlie is the only guy who doesn't ask for the recipe. So that's why he wins and inherits right. the chocolate factory. But the bad Another guy, office reference. I watched the Office Golden Ticket episode yesterday. It was really good. Really good. Yeah. The Office is very good. Yeah. One startling revelation in the documents was that the government had not relied exclusively on green glass for reports of the Rosenberg spying activities. Another informer, Jerome Tartikoff, had supplied a great many details about the Rosenbergs, though he never testified in court. Tartikoff, who was serving a two-year sentence for interstate auto theft, was Rosenberg's closest companion in jail. Like Rosenberg, he was a former communist, and the two spent a great deal of time playing chess together. In return for a reduction of his sentence, Tartikoff regaled the FBI with stories of Rosenberg's spy rings. Tartikoff. Yeah, so we got a snitch now. Got a spy and a snitch. Yeah. Damn. Tartikoff, I don't know if I'm saying that right, reported that Rosenberg had admitted to him that he played the game and lost. But that doesn't mean much. Like, okay, we got to find more. He also tipped off the FBI about a photographer who had taken some passport photos of the Rosenbergs soon after Greenglass's arrest and whose testimony at the trial was particularly damning. Defenders of the Rosenbergs were quick to assail Tartikoff's character. And even his FBI contacts were suspicious about some of his reports. Still, it was no longer just Greenglass's word on the Rosenbergs' guilt-dependent. I still don't think you can trust this completely. 
It's a guy looking for a reduced sentence. There's a motive involved. He's yeah. saying that Rosenberg said, I played the game and I lost. That doesn't mean he was the he was the 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 ringleader. It just means he was part of the process. He could have been just as guilty as Green Glass and everyone else. And it doesn't mean his wife needed to die. Maybe they did. Maybe there's more, but I'm I'm still not convinced. Doesn't look like it. I'm not convinced there's enough to execute them as quickly as they got executed. I think they were looking they were looking for a scapegoat. There was enough dots to connect to roll with it. But execution seems tough. Especially for the hey, wife. I don't know what was going on to the spy and the snitch at that chessboard. The newly opened FBI files revealed other evidence against the Rosenbergs as well, including interviews with more reliable informants who claim to have heard, albeit indirectly, of the Rosenberg spy ring. And the files trace the very suspicious disappearances of three of Julius Rosenberg's closest friends soon after his arrest. One, Morton Sobel, who caught in Mexico, who was caught in Mexico and tried and convicted, though not executed, with the Rosenbergs. Two others, Joel Barr and Al Sarant, later turned up in the Soviet Union. This is my first damning evidence. Okay. Your friends flee as soon as you get arrested. Two go yeah. back to Soviet Union and another get goes to Mexico and that's okay now he's a known spy right like that's the, I, that, I thought that before but now it's cemented in my brain known spy people are fleeing was he the ring leader that's what i still need to know i mean i honestly don't even care about that that much but don't then do you think green glass and gold should get executed as well i think if they're tied in ah I don't know. I don't know. I'm saying green glass and gold actually did the deed of getting the information out of the lab into the hands of the of gold, who then put it into the hands of the Soviets. They did the action. They got 15 years in prison. So if we're convicting him of being part of that, then he should also be in jail for sure. But execution and the wife, I still don't know why the execution was warranted. Yeah, I guess we don't have that 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 proof. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Taken together, this new evidence, though circumstantial, convinced Rodosh and Milton that the Rosenbergs were indeed spies. Yeah, I think there's no doubt they were spies. Yep. The Schneers continued to defend the Rosenbergs. What a Schneer thing to do. They issued a revised edition of their book in which they argued that additional evidence from the FBI file was meaningless since the FBI was perfectly capable of manufacturing or destroying evidence. <laughs> That's kind of like what we were saying about the JFK tapes. Like, they just pay someone a doctor. Like, well, how are we going to trust that? That's yeah. what they want us to think. And they gave you that. You guys could have done anything to this. You were the only guys with access to this. It's a good, it's a good call by the Schneers. Most mainstream historians sided with Radash and Milton and now accepted the guilty verdict. In 1995, the Rosenberg's remaining defenders received another blow when the army released Russian... 95? Yeah, 1995. Okay. Uh, the uh, remaining defenders received another blow when the army released Russian cables it had intercepted and decoded in 1943. Among the Russian agents referred to was one identified as J.R. Why would you new- use your own initials? That seems a little easy, too. Still, the government did not emerge from the new investigations with clean hands either. For one thing, though the new evidence against Julius Rosenberg was damning, the evidence against Ethel Rosenberg was much flimsier. That's where I'm really interested. Julius yeah, you're, is a spy. You're pretty, you're pretty banged up that Ethel got Ethel executed. Here. Yeah. Yeah. If you Okay, if he's a known spy and you need a scapegoat and you need to put an end to the spying business because the atomic bomb got stolen. I understand executing Julius Rosenberg. Sure. Why was his wife executed? I mean, I'm, I'm also thinking like different times a little bit. Like this is when a wife was supposed to support their husband and everything. So maybe the, the wife was pretty decently involved in it. I don't know. Let's see. We got uh, a, a three more paragraphs. Let's see if they tell us where did it say, uh, David Greenglass notably accused only his brother-in-law and never his sister. Well, that makes sense. Blood's blood. Yeah. 
Worse, the FBI files made clear that the only reason uh, Ethel Rosenberg was arrested was to put pressure on her husband to confess and name names. When this strategy failed, the government upped the ante, hoping that the threat of executing Ethel would break Julius. Wow, so it was all, it was all a game. It's a game of chicken. Yeah. I'm still fine with that. Because if, if he's a spy and he gave up the n- biggest nuclear weapon and he was the ringleader or uh, played a huge role in it, fine. Execute him. Do what you have to. Bluff that his wife's going to get executed. But you know what? I mean, the wife probably had some outs. I mean, couldn't she just say, like, I, it probably things looked pretty grim for him at the time. Be like, all right, yeah, he was the ringleader. Um, those guys that fled, they they were a big part of it. I um, you know, I kind of knew what was going on. I was just trying to be a good wife and keep it going. Like I feel like that could have been an easy out for her, and she didn't take that. Which makes me th- makes me think she's like a a tough take it to the grave kind of bitch, ride or die. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Still, don't think she should have been executed. <laughs> I I haven't been convinced of that yet. She- Maybe she could have saved herself and she didn't. Yeah. When the strategy failed, the government upped the ante execution. Perhaps the most shocking document in the files revealed that FBI agents standing by at Julius Rosenberg's execution had ready a number of questions. Should he choose to talk at the last moment, among the questions was, was your wife cognizant of your activities? Even as it executed her, it was clear the government remained uncertain of her guilt. That's fucked. It's tough. So, so they're they're bringing him to be executed. She's in line, waiting in line kindly behind to die. And he's right. like, and, and their question was, was your wife aware of your activities to get him to talk? He says no. And then they execute her. Not that you can trust his answer, but even asking the question says you're kind of doubting it. But you're still going to kill her five minutes next? That Come on. Come on. Ethel didn't deserve to die. It was a big game of chicken. They were pushing it to the end. She she never cracked on anything. I know, but once he's dead, so they executed him first, right. turn to Ethel and be like, all right, we're not going to execute you, but you're in prison forever. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what courtroom decisions had already been made by that point. Um, yeah. yeah, but it seems, it seems they're still asking questions as right before they're still asking questions. That's crazy. Trying to get the best info they can. This is not to say that Ethel Rosenberg was innocent. The Rosenbergs were a very close couple. The fuck does that mean? They were married. They were very close, Jim. (laughs) Okay. They were married and they moved from Russia to America together. I would hope. Again, I think it's I think this I think you're missing a little part of like the time piece here. Like, I don't think all couples were really that close then. <laughs> mm, 1950s family. A lot of love. <laughs> I think a, a lot of drinks and hidden abuse, too. The Rosenbergs were a very close couple, and Ethel almost certainly was aware of what her husband was up to. I'm fine with that. Uh, but there was no evidence she participated in his spying, and the government's cynical behavior in executing a wife in order to pressure her husband can hardly be considered a triumph of justice. Furthermore, the FBI files make clear that even if Rosenbergs, even if the Rosenbergs were guilty of spying, the death penalty was a gross injustice. The information they were convicted of passing on to the Russians simply wasn't that important. A few months after describing the case as the crime of the century, nope, Lindenberg baby was, J. Edgar Hoover privately acknowledged to FBI agents that the Soviet scientists had undoubtedly developed their bomb independent of any information they'd received through espionage. The head of the FBI is like, yeah, well, the thing they passed, it it meant nothing. They just figured it out themselves because that's how life works. Yeah. And a year after the Rosenberg's execution, General Leslie Groves, the military chief of the Manhattan Project, told a, told a closed meeting of the Atomic Energy Commission that the data that went out in the case of the Rosenbergs was of minor value. What David Greenglass passed on to Harry Gold, a crude drawing of part of the plutonium-fired implosion device, could hardly have condensed 
the results of the Manhattan Project in any technological meaningful way. It was just a picture. Right. Like the, the they got the picture and they're like, this is it. We have the bomb now. Ugh. David Greenglass was a spy and so was Julius Rosenberg, but both were small time amateurs. Rosenberg couldn't even hold a job, let alone run a major spy ring. To accuse him of having stolen the secret of the atomic bomb was either a cynical move on the part of the government playing to the anti-communist hysteria of the period or a sign that the government was itself caught in the grips of that hysteria. The irony of the Rosenberg case then is this. The accusers and defenders of the Rosenbergs were both right. The Rosenbergs were spies and they were also scapegoats. The Rosenbergs were not innocent, but they certainly did not deserve to die. That's what the conclusion in this book is. That's the end. Okay. I think this was fun because I I, we, I in took the information as we went, so you got to hear all my thoughts as we went. Yeah, you came on the ride with me. Where do you land? Did Let's do Julius first. Was he a spy? We both say yes. Ooh, I don't know if I want to do it individually. Yeah, Julius was a spy. Yeah. Did he deserve to die? Uh... To a degree, yes. I I think I think the word that you said a couple times there at the end was hysteria. I mean, we're we're talking about, I mean, a cold war that went on for what twenty plus years, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I mean, this this was a hysterical time. You watch the old videos of kids hiding under their desks and stuff like that, because that'll save you from a nuke. Um, you're you're clearly a spy, and. The hysteric time, the, the timing of this uh, was the timing of this was tough. When you're talking about the atomic bomb and a, a weapon of that power, even if they knew he was an amateur spy, right? Right. Well, what's the message you're sending to the big time spies? Hey, fuck, <laughs> that Julius dude was an amateur and they killed him. So maybe let's not do this anymore. You know, so I get that message. I'm cool with it, actually. That's a good I'm, point. I'm, I'm fine with Julius being executed. He's a spy. He didn't cop to it. He could have cop to it, but he didn't cop to it. I think that maybe like his his stay on death row could have been a little longer. Maybe he would have broke after like ten years. <laughs> I don't know why it was like three months, or I don't know how long it was, but it was pretty quick. Yeah. So I, I, I'm fine. I think he was a spy. I'm fine with him being executed. Because you had to send a message when you're talking about nuclear bombs. Yeah. And like, if that quote's true, I played the game and I lost. He understood it, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think the point you just made about the also sending a message uh, with the hysteria and Cold War is like, yeah, if you if you get caught for any if it like what if they knew he was a low level guy, like you were saying, but they they wanted to push the envelope to scare all the high level guys. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a factor. I mean, yeah, this, I, I don't, I, I forget if you say uh, the way you phrase it. If he should have died, um, I mean that's that's, <laughs> I mean that's a heavy argument for a lot of a lot of people on a lot of things. Um, I, the outcome that happened, I'm not surprised with it. Kind of adds up for him. I the have... wife, you're not pleased with. No, and and I just wanted to let you guys know they were a. Ar- <laughs> They were arrested in May. Oh, no, no. On June 17th, 1950, he was arrested. Okay? And three years later, he died. So the trial and the death was in three years' time. That's really, really quick for an execution. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. Cold War. But there's a, there's a, there might be a benefit to waiting out, seeing if he has information. Making his life hell. Not torturing him, but like just seeing. If you, got him, if you got him locked up, where's he getting his info from? Ethel being executed, I think, is complete misjustice and and fucked up. And put her in jail because she knew about spying happening. Put her in jail for the rest of her life. Put her in jail for whatever. The same sent she shouldn't have got a worse sentence than green glass and gold who literally did the physical act of the information. Yeah, the green gas gold stuff is tough. I The the close couple stuff is suspicious. Um, again, may, maybe it ties into deeper things. Maybe there was a lot of, maybe 
the Russian spies, a lot of them operated as couples to be unsuspecting. Well, so we maybe know that, that we know maybe that, that was across about the bow too. But we don't have like, any information of her. There was not, There's no information of her helping. They were close. <laughs> they were close. They're I don't close think. I, I don't think Ethel should have been executed. Yeah. Again, timing hurt Ethel. I I think she had an she had outs to save her life, and she didn't do it, Jim. So I mean, I don't fully feel for her. Well, you don't get murdered. You don't get executed because you didn't rat on your husband. Like, come on, that's not a cause for execution. Uh, I'm just saying, I I think she was somewhat involved and there there could have been other ways out of this and I, I don't think she really took them. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't... It's It sucks. I think the USA was clearly trying to prove a point when they were doing all of this. Um, I, I, I think she could have gotten out of this alive if she truly wanted to. I agree, but I don't think that's the same thing as saying she deserved to be executed. Right. I think there's people all day that could say n- nobody deserves to be executed. I know you're not you're not saying it in that way, but yeah, no, I, I just cold, I, I think we're talking I think, Cold War. We're talking nukes. We're talking millions of people potentially dying. So yeah. uh, when you consider what's at stake, if what if she was what what if she was fully entrenched? She gets out 15 years later, and she does something awful. You know. I mean, they're they're covering their butts to a degree. Mm. It's it's not pretty. It's never gonna be. But yeah, Thank you. yeah. If 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 they put her on the death sentence just to try and get Julius to talk, and it didn't work, and they're like, "Fuck!" Now we got to kill her. I think you could kill Julius and then took Turk to her and like, "All right, fuck it." He called our bluff. You're just in jail now. I'm split. I'm split. You can't tell me. I don't think. She deserved to die. I think I think that was in I think that was I think nowadays I think nowadays his execution could sit fine with people because it's spying and all that. And I think hers would really never be allowed to happen. Could just make up evidence. It's the government. (laughs) All right. Well, that's an interesting tale of history with communists. I have a. we have a we can do a couple more of these episodes. I still have DB Cooper I want to do and I still have what was the other one that I really want to do? Alcatraz Escape. Sure. But those I want to do a lot of research. This book I have right here has a, a lot of other stories that I'm going to read like 5 and I'm just going to have the the listeners if they if they're like, "Oh, do that one." Send it in to us. And Jake, you right now I just want to try and gauge interest on some, okay? Okay. Did Pocahontas save John Smith? Half interested. Why did Benedict Arnold turn traitor? Interested. Who was to blame for wounded knee? I don't know. That's a slaughter. Half interested. Was Amelia Earhart a spy? Interested. Okay, so you're interested in that one? What happened to the Gulf of Tonkin? Sure. The rest are ones I don't want to do. They're either like too sad like or or whatever. But all right, so let me know if those interest you or if there's any others that interest you. And uh, thanks. We will be back again next Tuesday with Laughs from the Past. If you haven't checked out our Instagram page, it's like laughs underscore from underscore the underscore past because everything else is taken. But we're trying to do some fun stuff. we got like Wild West Wednesdays, Famous Fridays, trying to do some fun stuff, get some fun content out there. Thanks, guys. We will see you next week. 